Hello, hi everybody, and welcome to part four of Banjo Kazooie. So, uh, in the last part, we just got ourselves a honeycomb, and uh, we're gonna keep getting the rest of the jiggies and stuff here. Uh, again, lots of mumbo tokens at this level. Keep an eye out for him. Uh, so the thing about Treasure Trove Cove is that there is a shark in the water that will eventually chomp you. He only does one unit of damage, but he does get on your ass. And the, if you just stand there and let him hit you, well, he'll drain your health pretty quickly. And uh, he's hungry for some cheese and crackers, yes. Oh, someone's entered my water space. I'm going to chomp them deliciously. Mmm. <laughs> That's how I always get. That's the that's the voice I always gave that shark, just because of the things he's saying when you go in the water. Oh, I can't wait for this morsel of food. This is going to be delicious. Yes. Mmm. Ah, oh, I love the soundtrack so much. I'm gonna shut up and let you listen to this for a bit. Oh wait, wait, wait. Actually, I love. That little touch too, this little touch about the music with Banjo-Kazooie where like, it's always changing and adapting to the situations that you're in, you know? When it goes underwater, the song is still there, but it's very like muted and quiet, like you're swimming underwater. When you get to sections that are like really intense, like in Mumbo's Mountain, the song changes when you get to the area where the gorilla's throwing the oranges and stuff, you know? It gets a little bit more heavy and it, it just changes the music slightly. and. I really like that little aspect. I like when games try and do that, where they sort of adjust the soundtrack to the situation you're in, whether you're underwater, in a boss fight, or, you know, there's just something about the, the particular part of the level they decide to, you know, let's add some drums, let's let's change things up here, let's do this and do that, do that. I, I just love that, you know, it's, a, it's an interactive soundtrack. And Gruntilda's Lair itself, there's like so many versions of Gruntilda's Lair because every time you come up to a world, like, there's the Mumbo's Mountain Gruntilda theme. There's the Treasure Trove Cove Grun Gruntilda theme. The Gobi's Valley Gruntilda theme. And, you know, I remember someone uploaded a YouTube video of every... Like, all of Gruntilda's Lair theme song done by, like, every version. Like, uh, for every time it approaches a new world or it's underwater or something. And that's that song went on for, like, must have been 12 or so minutes. And, uh, you know, it's just fun. Again, had to be silent, because the soundtrack, glorious. <laughs> Just love it. Because Banjo-Kazooie was a, a rare game. Rare? Haha. <laughs> it was one of those rare games where, like, it sort of usurped Super Mario 64 to me as being, like, a really good 3D platformer. I think this is probably, like, one of my most favorite 3D platformers ever on the N64, if maybe the GameCube... I don't know, it's just... I, I don't really think about these things too much, but... It's really solid gameplay here, and I really like all the things it does better than a game like Mario 64, where, like, you know, some stars in Mario 64 I thought were a little bit awkward, a little bit too confusing. This game pretty much spells out what you're supposed to be doing really well. You know, when Captain Blubber's telling you, oh, I can't get my gold because I can't swim, that's your clue to go, you know, swimming around in the water and try finding his gold and stuff. When you come up to the totem poles in Mumbo's Mountain, they're like, you should shoot blue eggs, and we want, we want tasty blue eggs. And so you know that if you have the ability to shoot eggs, probably shoot at the totem pole and stuff like that. It's never really too obscure or too confusing on what you should be doing. It never tries to, to confuse you too much. I think games like Super Mario 64, some of the stars, they're very cryptic on what they want you to do. I still don't know how. I figured out how to get one of the stars in Womp's Fortress, where you have to shoot yourself out of a cannon and hit the corner of a wall in order to unlock it. Because I don't know what it applies to the hint. I, I can't even remember what the hint is right now, but... You know, I just remember Banjo-Kazooie was better for that, where... I knew exactly what I had to do to find all these jiggy, these jiggy pieces, you know. The five Jinjos lying around. Well, I found four of five. Where's that last Jinjo? Oh, I found the last Jinjo. I got a jiggy booyah. Let's go climb all the way to the top of Treasure Trove Cove. Maybe there's something up there. Oh, sure enough. You know. Uh, so it was really fresh in that respect. You know, it doesn't kick you out of the world. And 
make you restart from the beginning like Mario 64 or Mario Galaxy might do. And Again, I'm not trying to nitpick or bitch at the other Mario games. Mario 64 is fantastic. I love Mario 64. Mario Galaxy's even better. I'm just saying, I really like how crafted Banjo-Kazooie is. It's just so convenient. It's so addicting. It's so uh, satisfying to platform around, you know? When you've collected a hundred musical notes, you always have this feeling like, yeah, I just did that. And then you get your last jiggy, and you're like, yeah, I just did that. Great thing about this game, you can view the totals in your menu as well. So it tells you here, 100 out of 100, 10 out of 10, but one of two honeycombs. I'm missing a honeycomb. It even tells you how much of your life you're wasting playing this game. <laughs> Not that you're wasting it. I'm just saying. It can be depressing if you're looking for a honeycomb and you don't know where it is because the draw distance is terrible. And then you finally look at the clock and you're like, oh god, I was here for like three hours. I mean... I was there for one hour. Wait, that's not much better. Oh, God. Because I didn't use guides when I played Banjo-Kazooie for the first time. Didn't use guides at all. I had to do it the old-fashioned way, looking everywhere. When I find honeycombs like that, that was all, you know, me looking around, me jumping all over the place. Because that's how gaming's supposed to be. Don't rely on guides too much, kids. You know? Game Facts, it's a cool website. It's great to discover things you didn't know were in the game, but, you know, when you do your first playthrough of anything, first person shooter, whatever, don't use guides. That's the part of, that's the point of gaming, you to stimulate your mind and to make you think about things and stuff like that, you know. Anywho, at the lighthouse, we hit a Gruntilda switch, so jump on this cannon, keep going right and we will find the third jiggy piece of Gruntilda's lair. A booyah! Alrighty, so we got two new moves in Treasure Trove Cove. The launch pad that lets us jump really high, and the ability to fly. And we also do technically have 200 musical notes, so we can't actually go in that musical note door that uh, we saw earlier. But uh, I'm still going to go in the appropriate order, let's say. I'm pretty sure the next world is supposed to be the third world, so let's go there. But we go back to this room, we use the launch pad, and whee! And there's our third world. And it's here Bottles goes, oh, you can put all the pieces in by pressing Z. Just, just put that in the beginning of the game. <laughs> I couldn't push Z before, now I can. Either way, we've unlocked a new world, and it is Clanker's Cavern. Clanker's Cavern has a very unique, very awesome set piece. And again, for the N64, this game has amazing graphics, I think so. This is the game I always point to and go like, you know, the PlayStation is a, per a perfectly fine console, and I love so many of the games on the PlayStation. But uh, graphics-wise, Banjo-Kazooie is doing so much better than PlayStation games, you know. There are a lot of N64 games that are just, they bring so much, so much style and so much, just, it just looks great. And you know, there are good looking PlayStation games, but every time I think of PlayStation games, I think of more blocky kind of graphics and stuff. I don't think Banjo, I, I, I never saw a Crash Bandicoot or a Spyro the Dragon uh, create something like Clanker. And for those of who aren't familiar what Clanker is, uh, we're going to find out. But I always thought when playing this game, like back in 1998 when it came out, Clanker looked so awesome. And this is sort of like the sewer level of Banjo-Kazooie, let's be honest. I mean, it is a dark cavern where you're swimming around and everything's all pipey and stuff. So it's kind of like the sewer level, but even as a sewer level, Banjo-Kazooie can succeed and make you appreciate that level because everything looks great. Yeah. So this little ugly little bastard will always come up every time you come close to this thing. And what I always do, every time I come up to one of these holes, is I just start, immediately start jumping and pecking. Because I know when I jump and peck, he'll never actually really hurt you for the most part. I find that when you're pecking, just as he's coming out, he'll always run into Kazooie's beak and take damage. And uh, it's just a lot easier to speed up and, and attack them this way. 
So just as soon as you're coming up to a wall, just jump and peck, and he'll come out and he'll take damage. Yellow Jinjo up behind this beehive. That guy can be a little bit hard to notice. And uh, this is the part where you might drown a few times because you're expected to swim in the water a lot. And again, you can't stay in the water forever. You will drown. But uh, this is Clanker. Oh, which is garbage grinder. Clanker not like dirty water. What fresh air. I just remember looking at Clanker when I was a kid and being like, holy crap, it's a giant mecha fish that's used to eat garbage. And he's got like these eyeballs, he's got these big clanking teeth. You actually climb on top of Clanker uh, to get around and stuff. And this is basically all this world is, is this big circular room and some pipes along the way. But I just remember thinking, god damn, Clanker looks awesome. For the N64, I thought this was pretty freaking cool and pretty inventive. Because again, this is a sewer level, let's be honest, it's a sewer level level, but damn, I, I, I like this game a lot, you know? <laughs> I love gushing about a game that's great, a game that's very stylistically awesome and, and fun to play, and god damn, the people who have never experienced this game before, get on it. And because we can't swim in the water forever, this little fish is down here blowing bubbles. And much like Sonic the Hedgehog or anything else, absorb the bubbles and you'll get your air back. Uh, what we're supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be swimming through this keyhole. Uh, or at least the keyhole in the keyhole, if that makes sense. Uh, we have to spin through the key at least three times, and that way the Chang... The Chang... Bleh, Chang? The chain that is holding Clanker will uh, let him get some air and get him out of the water and stuff. Because poor Clanker, he's being abused by Gruntilda the Lich. And we gotta do everything in our power to make him, you know, happy and get him out of this crap. Because, you know, Gruntilda's a witch. She's a witch. She, she fits her, her description. <laughs> So that's two. You don't have to, it doesn't matter what direction you fly through it either. You can go from one direction or the other. As long as you pass through it three times, the key will turn. And we'll finally be getting Clanker some air. Poor little guy. And for our troubles, a Jiggy appears on the top of his back. Uh, in order to climb on top of Clanker, basically his fins are now at the top of the water, so we can climb the fins and then sort of super jump onto his back and stuff. And Clanker is a big mechanical fish that, uh, he's pretty much the big star of this level, and we're going to be using him to get all of our jiggy pieces as it is. But, uh, before I do that, I'm going to go to this green tunnel in the back where, uh, Clanker's tail is. Because there's something about this cave that you should really check out. If it mutants are we, Jigsaw is ours! Fight us, you must! Oh god. Uh, I don't think they're really that much stronger than the regular crab guys they saw in Treasure Trove Cove. A simple ground pound will obliterate them and give you two honey pieces. So, uh, you know. Ground pound to your heart's content. Once you kill them, you get a jiggy piece. Once again, Banjo, uh, you know, I think Grunty made the mutants because she's sort of contaminated this place and she's chained up Clanker and stuff. What an asshole you are to kill people just because they're mutants. God damn, Banjo-Kazooie. You two are the worst. <laughs> the theme of abusing others who did nothing wrong is a constant in Banjo-Kazooie, and I... <laughs> It's a funny game. We're not jerks. We just, we need those jiggy pieces. And anyone who gets in our way, well, you know, they're gonna have to get a little lesson in what it means to be a bear and a bird. Yeah. Or something. I, I don't know. Either way, uh, Clanker, I don't think I actually activated his, his line. No, I don't, I don't think I did, but basically, Clanker, when you get close to his face, he mentions he has a toothache. And you'll notice two of his teeth are actually golden, and uh, you want to aim Banjo and Kazooie. You have a great manual aiming by holding the R button down. When you hold the R button down, 
the camera focuses behind you really nicely, so I would recommend it. But uh, use your eggs to shoot out the golden teeth, and uh, the dude will be happy that his toothache is gone. Although he won't have any more bling in his mouth, and you know, it's nice to have bling, Clanker. You look awesome with bling. Not that I'm ever going to do that, because it looks retarded, but uh, <laughs> for you, it might have been good. So inside, you get a jiggy piece, and uh, we're going to keep helping out Clanker, going to keep making him happy in part five. See you then.